Hi everyone, David Manley here, and today I'm going to show you something really cool. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take what we did in the previous video, and we're going to use our markdown to make it in some cool documentation based on this. So documentation is one of the most important uh, skills that someone can have in data science and data analytics, or data analysis. And without that, you don't know what you've done or how to do it six months down the road when you have to go back to it or you have to you know, look at somebody else's stuff. So when we look at here, what I'm going to do is a complete walkthrough of the process I created for creating world maps with Excel data in uh, and using our world map and uh, our color brewer um, in our studio. So if you look right down here, this is what we left off with in a previous video on creating these maps. We had this great map on uh, you know uh, international furniture parts sales. So what we're going to do here is this code, this whole snippet right here of stuff I'm going to go through this so the top part right here this is the uh, the label the title the author the date and the output okay so this gives you know credence to this and it'll show up when I create the HTML output of this so first off before you even do this actually what you would want to do is have our markdown installed it's our markdown you go install dot packages um, I mean, I could type it in here if we need to to show you guys this. If you don't have it, install dot packages, and then you just do this R markdown like that, and then you would load it as a library once you're done with that. So let's remove that, and then you just hit library and R markdown. Okay. So once you have that, you'll get a generic output here or a form. And you want to remove those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm walk you through what I'm doing here. So again, we've got the title, the date, and the output. Okay, that's just normal. This will give you your title, the author's name, the date, and stuff like that. Then you'll see that's between these brackets. Okay, these dashes. Then you've got your regular text right here. So it's tutor I've got tutorial videos that I built on this. Then underneath this, you're going to see I have two links right here two videos one is for the earlier version of our studio 3.4 and earlier and the other one is for any version of our studio I think it's like 3.0 and above um, which is this one here and so what you do is you have these brackets that put in the text that you want and then the link is inside of these right here inside the parentheses for each one I put it with a dash and this will show up you know correctly with the links you know this colon dash this it won't show the link or the URL but it'll be a hyperlink text same with here and then we've got the text here uh, which explains what's going on I've broken it down so it'll have a task I like to have a task on there what were we asked to do what is the purpose of this analysis what is the purpose of this research we're doing so in this case would be the client wants international furniture part sales plotted on a world map for better visualization for a group of executives in upcoming sales and marketing meetings. Okay, so next what we do is we describe the data set. So you see how I have these for uh, bold column headers. Uh, what I do, or they're not column headers, but they're like bold words before a uh, descriptive words. I have that set off here with these double asterisks. See that the asterisk and then the task and then colon and the double asterisk again. If I don't put those there and I put them behind this, that whole line will be highlighted or bold. Um, next, I have the action. So the data set, this describes the data set right here. And then underneath that, I have this, which is a link to the actual data set. So I've actually put this world uh, or international furniture part sales up on Kaggle. And this is the actual link to it. So when this comes up in HTML, you'll see that there'll be a link that says International Furniture Part Sales, and that if you click on that, that takes you to this link right here. So it'll be hypertext. It takes you to this link of Kaggle.com, my name, or my username, International Furniture Part Sales. And then you can download the data set from there. Next, we say load in the required R packages. So this is the first piece of actual code. So see, these are not code the R markdown doesn't work that way the actual code has to be between three of these things these little guys they're not quite the uh, they're the ones underneath the uh, uh, similar to uh, or the top right above tab that's the uh, 
uh, button right above the tab on your keyboard. So you use these and inside of there will be your code. So first what we want to do is we want to have R set up. This is just the width and height and uh, things like that and then I want the warning messages and messages turned off because those messages normally get down here I don't need to have those in my end documentation to show people oh, there's a warning here and a warning here and there are 300 results here and there was this that doesn't matter I don't need that in this case if you need that that's fine then you would remove these right here where it says warning equals false you can either make the warning equals true or just remove that and that makes it true by removing that same with message equals false next I have my libraries and the I have R color brewer which is going to give me the color palettes like you saw over here I have R world map which gives me access to some functions for this mapping that I need I have read Excel which gives me the read underscore XLSX function which we're going to use in just a second here to import our data and then I have cable extra which allows me some nicer columnar and row uh, forms so when I look at the data, it doesn't have to be messy like it sometimes is. So when I look in here, if I were to type head dot, uh, the, you know, the header of the data or the tail for the tail part, the first six rows, the last six rows, it would show it in here, but it wouldn't be as pretty. I'll show you how to make it nicer. That's what this cable extra does here. Now I'm taking the uh, code and I'm importing it from Excel and I'm going to put it into this data frame called map data. And that's the end of that. So that's going to that's what I need for the libraries and to bring in our data then I've got some more descriptive text here look at the first six rows of data in the map data data frame so what we're doing here this is where I'm using this cable extra this is the only place where I'm gonna use it in this one I like to use that when I'm listing rows of data and so what I've got is I've got the head this part right here which would be the top six rows of map data which is our data frame and I'm putting that into a data frame called DF and then what I'm doing is I'm taking cable of that DF, the cable function, and I'm pushing that into cable styling, this right here, striped font size equals 10 and full width equals F. What that's going to do is going to give me some nice rows instead of just data just sitting there. It makes it look prettier, easier to see, and easier to look at. I can also take this and run current and see what it looks like. So I can actually at any time run that and see what it looks like, and it'll show me. See how you know, this is not what you're going to see right here. But you see over here how it looks nice. You have all the columns and they're all like there's lines between them. It's easy to see. Every other row is shaded a little bit. It makes it nice and pretty. So that's why I like to use that. So let's minimize that back so we can see the code. That's what's nice about our markdown. You can sit at any of these rows. I can sit here and run that and load in my data or look at what I'm doing. So I've done that and I don't need to see that right now. So let's close that off and next and it puts it in the viewer right here when you do that so next I'm gonna aggregate the sales as that is what we want plotted right here so I've got and you notice how in each one of these little bits of code I don't have to really do this anymore unless I wanna hide something that I don't wanna see like messages or something so in this one I'm just using R same with this one you can have a comma behind it it really doesn't it's not gonna affect anything I could get rid of that comma and make it look nicer like the one above it and just have it like that that would do the same thing um, so anyway uh, in this one what we're doing is we're taking the aggregate function which we did this in the video too as I created earlier and uh, basically what we're doing is we're gonna aggregate with the fun equal sums so that's we're gonna summarize this field sales right so we want the sales but we don't we want it summarized we don't want it averaged we don't want it minimized or anything like that so what we want is that and then what we want to do is group by country and city see that? so we're going to be by equals list country equals map data uh, dollar sign country so that's how the, so if you were to look at this actual um, data in here you'll see that we have country we have city um, and we have sales which is uh, right here we also have latitude longitude transactions and units we could look so we could summarize by transactions we could summarize by units okay so that's how we get that into these this map data data frame so we've got the aggregate of this in there next what we're gonna do is we're gonna name that because once you aggregate that what it does it automatically sets the column for the sum column which would be the sales it's no longer sales it's now X by default if I had two sum fields it would be X and Y if I had three it would be X Y Z and so on so um, what we do here 
is we use the call names function and we're renaming uh, the X to International Furniture Parts Sales. And the reason being is that will also be carried into our plot and we don't want the name of the plot to be X. We want it to be International Furniture Parts Sales or whatever it is you would want. You would put that in here and that puts that into where the X was for the column name. That's how that row works there. And again, that's within a uh, code block right here. We could run that if we want to by clicking on this, run current, and see what it does. Uh, in this case, you know, it would bring back, it would just create the map data function with this and then rename the column names. Um, then we can join the data in our data frame to a world map. So this is where we're going to actually take this data now and put it to a world map and what we're using is in our world map, which is this, we're using um, this function called join country data to map. And the way it works is you put your data frame here. Your join column is here. How do you want to look it up? By country, obviously. We're going to use that one right there. And then our join code equals name. So once we do that, that's join it to a map. Then we set the color choice, so we tell it, you know, this is this text that will show up on the HTML page that we're creating here with our markdown that sets the color choice palette and plots the map with the map country data function from our world map. So we use the join country data to map function here in the previous one. Now we're using a different function. So we're using this function called map country data. First, what we're going to do is we're going to use that library we brought in called our color brewer. And what we're going to do is we're going to use spectral because that's what the map you saw earlier uses. It's a spectrum of, I think it was red to blue or something like that. And uh, off the top of my head, but we'll use that and it'll show you the maroon stuff or whatever's at the bottom or brown, something like that. And then the bluer stuff's at the top. You can also use different ones if you wanted to, like purples will show uh, it's more monochromatic, but it'll show the different color gradations better. But it depends on what you want to do. So this is the code to use our color brewer. We use brewer.pal uh, for palette, and then we pick the uh, how we want it to look, what we want it to see, spectral tens, what I'm using here. Next, after we've done that, then we have this. This is all in the same line of code. And keep in mind, at the beginning of these two, they're a little bit different than the previous ones. Um, I don't want to see the message equals false I put in there. So I don't want to see the messages, and I don't want to see warnings. Same with here, because you will get warnings and messages where you know the colors don't quite exactly match up to the data that you have perfectly who cares it'll show it correctly and um, so same thing here we have warning equals false and again our color palette here using our color brewer and then here what we have is this map country data where we're mapping the data where we bring in our world map furniture sales from here so we bring this guy right here in this data frame right here and then we've got the name column to plot remember this is where we don't want to have X, so we use this, which we created right here. We reset it to this, so we're going to use International Furniture Part Sales. And then our uh, cat method is fixed width. And color palette, this is where you could use other things, like I've got it here. You could use diverging, heat, whatever. But in this case, we're just using color palette, which we already created right here. So that we just put here, and we run it. And what's cool is... This is the columns all in here, and it's going to run this and put it correctly in our documentation. Then at the end, we just have a little bit of text to describe what we're doing here. The end result is an easily reproducible process that can be used to make custom world maps in just a few minutes. The color choices can range from heat and diverging to any number of different selections. From the R Color Brewer package, the color package spectral is more colorful, um, but a monochromatic palette like purple, as I said earlier, could be. Better. It depends on what you want to do, and the choice is yours. That's basically what I end it with. So this is going to show you how to create all this together in one document. So how do we do this? Once we've done all that, next we do is see this knit button up here. What you can do is I'm going to just going to use knit to HTML, or I can just click this because I've already used it for HTML. So I can just click here, and you have to give it a few seconds here. It's going to run it, and then it'll pop it up once it's done. So it's got to load up the HTML page, and it looks really cool when it's done and professional. So it's a nice way to document your stuff. You just have to give it a few seconds here, uh, maybe 15, 20 seconds as it builds it. Here it goes, and boom, there it is. So here's your title, our studio how to make world maps with Excel data in our world map. I could have capitalized this a little bit better, but it's fine. My name, uh, the date, 
and then see how remember I told you how I put the links in there it puts them correctly based on what I did there so you've got the hyperlinks here for the previous video for the for the versions 3.4 and prior you've got the link here for the more recent stuff so if you've got a more current version 3.5 and above you should be using this one because this one won't work and for that you need to use this one and then in this use case uh, it tells you about the description of what's going on remember I told you we have a task we want to we want to talk about and see how that asterisk that we used earlier right here that's what it does it makes it bold same with us here for data set here's the link to the actual uh, data set on Kaggle and um, so then it goes down here we talked about loading in the re the required R packages see how it automatically does it boxes in the code and shows it nicely very professional looking um, here's all four of our libraries here is the uh, pull in for the uh, uh, data set to load it into data frame map data uh, then we remember how we t I told you we're gonna look at the first six rows of data in the map data frame or map data data frame and I wanted to look pretty so what I showed you there here it is right here it looks nice it's centered and it shows it very easy to read it's not just garbled up looking data like it would be if it was straight out of you know the console it's actually made really nice so I can sit here and look at it and say here's the columns here's some ex example data and uh, you know I can use that and it looks very uh, good for documentation then we describe it as we go along aggregate sales is that what we want plotted uh, and then here's more code see how the code is all in a box it tells you how we aggregate the data map data we put this the aggregate into the map data and then we rename the column names from X to international furniture part sales and we're describing what we're doing as we go along here's another snippet of code where we bring in and join the data to a map we use the join country data to map function then we set the color choice the palette and plot the map with the map country data function from our world map so this we did here the first part was the color function where we have this we still have the rest common out we can remove that if we want we can leave that in our documentation if we want that's up to us and these are comments that I put in here throughout to, to further explain stuff um, obviously make sure you have the number sign before a comment also otherwise it'll try and run it and error out and same whether it's inline or out of line you can do that um, and then I have the function map country data which actually runs the map that we're trying to build and then what's neat is below this there's the actual map so because we followed everything in there the way I showed you here's our end map we could have had several maps if we wanted to um, to show you different color variations and then here's our end description of it you know the end result I could have said summary you know whatever I want to do there um, probably should have said summary but that's fine you see you have your task see how I did that this is what our markdown does it's really neat and nice and if you use that cable part that I was talking about cable extra it just makes your it look that much prettier um, rather than stuff straight off the console that's not formatted like this this is a nice formatting and so that uses the uh, striped uh, styling right here so that's what this row right here is okay you just pipe that in that's the pipe right here percent uh, Oops, let's click out of that. There we go. There's the pipe, and we take cable of this data frame here, and we put that in here, and we do this to it. That's what this does. Okay, and it shows it, makes it look nice and pretty. If I wanted to, I can go from here, and I can open it in the browser, and click on this, and here it is in the browser. Okay, there is my actual HTML, and I can look at this. I can dismiss that. It doesn't matter, but here is the actual code right there and the actual output looks very nice very presentable and I could save this and uh, look at it however I want to look at it um, save it as an HTML whatever I want to do uh, so let's close what if I wanted to do and I want to show you something a little extra here okay what if I wanted to use remember I told you about purples versus that let's take spectral let's just take this right here All right let's put this over here so it's saved and let's just bring in purples okay so I'm going to change that to this just make sure you have the correct alright let's get this correct here we got two of these there we go so I'm not, I'm only changing that I'm not changing anything else right let's just knit that just the way it is I'm just changing it to purple so I'm no longer doing the spectral 
and this is probably the one that I would use if I was going to give this to um, an executive or if I was going to give this documentation to a manager or a director or something like that and I want you know, it to look nice and to differentiate all the, the uh, high to low and middle of results in the countries very well. So let's run this now. I, the only change I made, as you see right here, is I added purples right here, right? And you can go look up our color brewer online. Just type in our color brewer palettes or palette choices, and you'll easily see a multitude of websites that already have all the different color variations for you to choose from. There's reds, purples, yellows, you name it, blues, um, things like that. Also, these diverging heat stuff. I'm going to show you that in a second. They're down here. They don't go up here. So let's run this. Let's knit this, okay, the way it is, and let's see what the purples do. So give it a second here. It takes like, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds for this to load, and uh, it'll show us it instead of the multicolors like we saw last time with the spectral, we will have just shades of purple, and it'll better highlight the highs and the lows. Now watch. See, there it is right there. So if I everything else is the same. I didn't change anything else, but now do you see how it quickly makes the high spots really pop? The ones that are over here the other one they're kind of hidden a little bit so that's why I would probably choose if I was going to really want if I really wanted people to see the variance between this and see the breakout of the lows that they the, you know the lows are downplayed more and the highs are played up more so this better shows the upper areas I would use this um, and that's a nice color variation I could use reds uh, I could use blues, and I, there's many other things I could use. Let me show you some other things. So I could have also gone in here, and instead of changing this one, I could change the bottom one. So this doesn't matter. If I change this one here, I no longer bring in the color palette. So let's put a number sign here, and let's do this. Let's bring in uh, a heat map. So what if I wanted to show heat? Let's do this. So I'm no longer using the uh, color palette from our color brewer here. And, uh, oops, somehow I have purple still there. That's fine. Let's do this. That heat. Just like that. Okay. So now I am no longer, well, let's get rid of this. Uh, what is going on here with this? I don't know why I put it back in there. And there we go. All right. So I'm no longer using the color palette, this part right here. So now I'm using this heat piece. And what is going on here? All right. Let's delete this. Oh, you know what? We're missing our comma at the end. Ha ha. I always look for the little commas between the lines. Okay. So next, let's take this and let's knit this. So I'm no longer using that. Now I'm using the heat pattern instead for the color palette. Let's see what that does. It's just a little different and it'll, you know, show you the lows, the mediums, and the highs. But you have to figure out what works best for you and what shows your uh, data best for your uh, customers. So see it here it pops and let's see what that looks like there it is so this is a heat map instead and so the lows obviously are right here and you can see higher this one kind of tends to in this data set because of the large size of the US and Alaska and China and you know these areas that it kind of more highlights the middle it does highlight some of this too you can identify them but I like the purple because it highlights the, the upper parts better in my opinion it makes them stand out more um, than a red versus an orange because it's kind of hard to differentiate between some of these sometimes but you can pick whatever you want it's up to you this quickly shows you how to do this and again here is the code all right here and I will um, I will have this posted for you actually I do have this posted if you go to my Twitter page or um, uh, was it ResearchGate and look up, look me up there. Um, you can uh, see my actual code there, and I will post a link to it in the uh, comment or in the uh, description down below this video. I will show you exactly uh, where to go to get the actual code for this. But this is the code right here that I used all the way through this. And one of the nicest pieces definitely is this cable extra. I like that the way that it shows the uh, data in rows nicely and breaks out nicely so it's very easy for uh, you know other readers to see it and differentiate um, again thanks for watching I hope you found this helpful and uh, educational and interesting please take a moment to subscribe 
like and comment. I would love to hear from you. And be sure and subscribe so that you can, you know, be notified of all the other great videos I have coming out. I'm going to do more R Markdown stuff and some more customization and predictive modeling and all kinds of cool stuff. So you want to be notified of, you know, these things when they come out. Uh, I try and put stuff up every week or so as as time allows. And uh, you know, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.